नमस्ते बिटिया हमेशा खुश रहो बिटिया वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू यू ऑल माई सेल्फ जे वी एन डॉक्टर रवि जैन असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ प्रैक्टिस ऑफ मेडिसिन एट फैकल्टी ऑफ होम्योपैथिक साइंस ज्योति विद्यापीठ वुमेन्स यूनिवर्सिटी इन टूडेज लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट थर्मल इंजरीज विद हाइपर थर्मिया और दीट इंजरीज Now, what is the mechanism of thermoregulation? The body temperature is controlled by hypothalamus, which is directly sensitive to the temp changes in the core temperature, and indirectly responds to the temperature-sensitive neurons in the skin. The normal set point of the core temperature is tightly regulated within the range 37 plus minus 0.5 degrees Celsius, which is which is necessary. to preserve the normal functions of many enzymes and the other metabolic processes in the cool environment the protective mechanism includes cutaneous vasoconstriction and shivering however in muscle activity that involves movement may promote heat loss by increasing connective loss from the skin and respiratory heat loss by stimulating ventilation in a hot environment sweating is the main mechanism for increasing heat loss this usually occurs when the ambient temperature rises above 32.5 degrees celsius on during exercise <clears throat> hypothermia when the generation of the heat exceeds the body capacity for the heat loss the core temperature rises non exertional heat illness occurs with a high environmental temperature with attenuated thermoregulatory control mechanism exertional heat illness typically develops in the athletes when the heat production exceeds the body's ability to dissipate acclimatization mechanism to environmental heat include stimulation of the sweat mechanism which increased the sweat volume reduced sweat sodium content and secondary hyperaldosteronism to maintain body sodium balance heat illness can be prevented by the adequate replacement of salt and water the clinical features consist of heat stroke and heat exertion depending upon the body temperature in heat exhaustion there is heat and sweating with the symptoms of headache weakness fatigue irritability tachycardia and dehydration when the core temperature rises further then the patient goes into the state of heat stroke heat stroke is characterized by heat and not sweating with multiple organ failure confusions aggression and shock now we come to the condition called as heat cramps heat cramps are the painful muscle contractions that occur following vigorous exercise and profuse sweating in hot weather with no elevation of the core temperature this is important that is the core temperature is not elevated in heat cramps the mechanism is extracellular sodium depletion as a result of persistent sweating exacerbated by replacement of water but not salt symptoms respond rapidly to dehydration with oral rehydration salts or the intravenous saline heat exhaustion it is the prolonged exertion in the hot and humid weather with profuse sweating and inadequate salt and water replacement with elevation in the core or the rectal temperature to between 37 and 40 degrees celsius the clinical features includes headache weakness fatigue irritability tachycardia and dehydration the blood analysis may show dehydration with mild elevation of the blood urea sodium and hematocrit the treatment of heat exhaustion the involvement it involves the removal of the patient from the heat and active 
evaporatory cooling using tepid sprays and fanning. The fluid losses are replaced with either oral rehydration mixtures or intravenous isotonic saline. Up to 5 liters positive fluid balance may be required in first 24 hours. Untreated heat exhaustion may progress to heat stroke. Heat stroke occurs when the core body temperature rises above 40 degrees Celsius and is a life-threatening condition. The symptoms of heat exhaustion progresses to include headache, nausea, and vomiting. The neurological manifestations include a coarse muscle tremor and confusion, aggression or loss of consciousness. The patient's skin feels very hot and sweating is often absent due to the failure of thermoregulatory mechanism. The complication of heat stroke consists of hypovolemic shock, lactic acidosis, disseminated intravascular coagulation, rhabdomyolysis, hepatic and renal failure, and pulmonary and cerebral edema. The investigations for complication includes routine hematology and biochemistry, coagulation screening, hepatic transaminases, creatinine kinases, and chest x-rays. Now the management of the heat stroke. The duration of hypothermia is the key to the outcome and immediate cooling should begin at the scene before transfer to the hospital. The aim should be to reduce the core temperature by greater than 2.2 degrees Celsius per minute to approximately 39 degrees Celsius while avoiding overshooting and hypothermia. Fluid resuscitation with crystalloid intravenous fluid should be instituted. Intravenous dextrose to prevent hypoglycemia. Appropriate monitoring of fluid balance, including central venous pressure, is important as over aggressive fluid replacement may precipitate pulmonary edema to further metabolic disturbances. Heat stroke is an emergency with significant mortality. Clear advice to avoid heat and heavy exercise during recovery is important. So this was all about heat uh, injury or hypothermia. In the next lecture, we will be discussing about the altitude sickness. This session was powered by Digital Version 2.0, Jyoti Vidya Peet Women's University. I hope you are satisfied with my digital session. If you have any query, please mention in the comment box and I'll try to resolve them. So this was all for today. Thank you very much. We will be meeting in the next lecture tomorrow.